Hello and welcome to another episode of Ken's training. Today's training is going to be on uh, testing a fire damper motor. So what's happening is, uh, let's see here. This here is the replacement motor that I got purchased right here. And I'm going to show you the motor that I troubleshooted to determine that it had failed. And then I'll go ahead and show you how to go ahead and do like a tabletop test for the the replacement motor here and so forth uh, but basically uh, let me show you what I got going on here this here is the the motor that went bad it is a uh, Bolimo there's the uh, manufacturer's name and there's the model number right there NF 120 S US now it tells me right there that the voltage to this is 120 volts AC and this can be mounted to go in either counterclockwise or clockwise direction now this one was mounted in uh, clockwise because the cam is on this side and now there's two leads uh, two electrical lines that are attached right to this now one of the electrical lines has three legs coming out of it and the other one has two legs coming out of it. Now if you look at the schematic, which I'm going to try to show you right there, the schematic shows you that the two leads are motor uh, one and two and that there's a switch on there. Now if you look at that schematic for the switch, you'll see that normally closed is S1 and S2 and normally opened is S1 to S3 so that's the switch that I want the normally open switch so we're gonna test that on the new one now now that I've got this on the table let me show you how to do a tabletop test of this motor alright one second to get set up here okay you can see right over here I've got 110 volts now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to take the motor leads right here which is hot and neutral and uh, I just want to make sure that you can see everything in the camera. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to put the motor leads directly into there and this should operate now I need to also verify that I have 110 volts coming out of here. Now let me show you how to do that. I'm wearing some gloves for some additional protection here. All right. So now, am I? Do I have a good connection there? I take my meter and I go on NCV. All right, and I don't. Hold on. Oops. I was actually on the wrong lead. Okay. Actually, there we go. So you know that I've got 110 volts going to this. This is not moving. This motor in this mechanism here is bad. So we know that this is the bad one. I already troubleshooted it. I was just giving you a tabletop demonstration on how to determine whether this uh, fire damper motor is working or not. So we know that this one is not working. Now here's the, they don't make an exact replacement of this one. Here is the replacement here. Very similar, but not 100% uh, identical. So a little bit shorter and so forth, as you can see. I'll have to make some adjustments when I, when I go to do the installation, which is perfectly fine. Now, this is on clockwise. They send this out of the factory counterclockwise. That's no good for me. So to change that, what you do is you pull this tab up here and then this comes directly out. Give me one second. I'm just putting this underneath and trying to fill it out. There it goes. Just came completely out. Okay. And this is kind of like a a gear here where this goes okay so now I want to utilize the same direction which is clockwise so I'm just going to spin that over use that direction now here's the cam here and I want this to be 
uh, lined up at zero. All right. Now let me show you one other thing before I put that on. There is a ring right here, which is where this, like, kind of like a C clamp, goes into once the uh, the cam mechanism goes on. All right. So now, again, line this up to zero, which is right like that. There's actually a nice mark right here in the shaft too that lines up with this. Now that that's in and this is pushed down, then I can go ahead and put on this clamp. And that locks that right in place. All right, and then it's a half inch shaft, so that'll just go right in there perfectly. They have an insert here for half inch shafts. If there was the shaft was larger, you could pull this out here and remove that insert, or they have a smaller one if it's a three quarter inch shaft. But this one will uh, work out good because my shaft is just half inch. Okay, so now it's connected to uh, uh, clockwise, same as the one that we pulled out. I'm going to move this one to the side just to give myself a little bit of room. Now, we also have, this is a little bit fancy here, they have a an unlock and a lock excuse me, unlock on the right and lock on the left. That's if this thing fails, I can use this a little wheel right in here in order to get this to do what I want it to do. And then I can lock it into place. That only works if there's no electricity on. Um, but right now I'm just going to give you a tabletop demonstration on how to test this. Now, just like the other one, it's got two leads coming out. One of the leads only has two lines right here. It's a black and a white. That's my motor, okay? So let's see if I can show you the schematic here. They actually they don't really show a, a schematic is slightly different, but white is one, black is two, neutral and line, so line voltage. Now the line voltage on this one, this can take actually from 24 up to 240 volts. We're, we're, we're going to be using it for 120 volts here and actually 120 volts is in the field. The one that we pulled out is actually rated at 120 volts, which is right there if you can read that, 120 volts. Let me see if I can do a zoom in on that real quick. Okay. So right there, it's 120 volts, you can see that, and you can see the schematic really nice in that picture. Okay, so let me pan back. So now, we're going to do a tabletop test with this. Now, the switch on this one here has this many leads coming out of it. It has six leads coming out of it. Now, if you look at the schematic, okay, you'll see how that works. All I need is one normally open switch, so I'm going to use S1 and S3 for my testing. And I've got my meter here, and I'm going to set my meter to continuity, okay? So what's going to happen is, oh, and there's one other adjustment that I should explain. Right over here, I'll, I'll demonstrate it over here because it's just easier to see. Um, but Okay, so this is an example for switch number S4 to S6. I was, uh, um, all right, so actually I'm going to be better off using S4 and F6, S6 rather than S1 and S3 because I want my damper to be opened 50% uh, before the switch closes. And the reason why is so that way the fan motor, this control, this is going to control an exhaust fan, doesn't start too fast. This is adjustable, and the adjustment is right, right there, and you can uh, read. Uh, they, it starts off at 10 percent, then it goes 20 percent, 30 percent. Excuse me, 20, 40, 60, and then 80 percent. I've got it set at 50 percent. So when this reaches 50 percent, when the cam goes Okay, so you, right there, the cam is at zero. So you're, I'm zeroed out. When this reaches right there, the switch should close. And uh, so I'm going to attach my leads to S4 and S6, which is the normally open leads. Okay, so I'm going to take this here, 
and I just have to read the wires to determine which one is S4 and S6. It looks like it's these two leads right here which are orange and gray. Alright, give me one second to confirm that. Okay, yeah, we are confirmed. It is S4 and S6 that I have right there. Let me pan back. Alright, so I'm going to take, I put my meter on alligator clip leads so it's going to be easy for me to hold on to it. Touch the leads and you have a closed switch. Right now this should be not made and indeed it is not made. Now I'm just going to leave that off to the side. Now I'm going to take the motor and I'm going to take these two leads and put them in that 110 volts right over there and I'm going to physically drive this. So you're going to see this, this is what the other motor, the motor that's bad, should have done. Okay. Now right there, hopefully you can hear that, but this is moving right there. Make sure that you can see that. Alright, let me give you a zoom in on that. Hang on. And I'm still out oh, there it goes right there. Right at 50%. You can see that my meter is now you can hear the meter and then there's the light right there. So indeed that is working just the way I want it to go. I'm gonna shut that well I'll leave the meter on just for a second. I'm gonna let this go to a hundred percent on the cam. And then basically this is how this motor just normally sits, just like that. I'm going to pull this out so the electricity is now removed and now you're going to see when that stops. Alright, right there, you see that? Right about 50%, which is exactly what I got it set for. So, that's just to give you a quick uh, tabletop demonstration. Okay, now what I'd like to do is I'd like to explain what the, lo the lock and unlock feature is and also what this little handle does. If this new motor was to fail, what you can do is you can take this little arm, put it inside here, it tells you what direction to turn in, and then if you watch the cam, you'll see that I'm actually manually opening that up. So if I was if there was a damper attached, I could manually open it, set the damper to whatever I want to set it for, then you take this lock here and you move it to lock and you can pull this out and now that's going to lock in that exactly where you set it at so that's a, a way to manually operate this in case the motor was to die if you introduce electricity it'll go to the unlock position if you try to override this in the lock position and move this Watch what happens. It will it will immediately unlock. Let me go ahead and do a zoom in on that so that you can see it. All right. So I'm going to try to move the handle, and you're going to see that go directly to the unlock position. Watch. Right, I'm going to do it over here so, to make sure that you see it. Hold on. Okay. Here we go. Okay. You see that? Pull this out, and now the cam mechanism is, has been released. So now it's going back to spring tension where it's going to close or yeah, which is a normal, this is a normally closed situation because it's a fail safe because it's going to a fire damper. Normally you put that when the damper is in the closed position. So the internal spring brings that to a closed. But basically that is how this uh, override arm works and the lock and the unlock feature, how that works. Thank you. Okay, now let me explain how this, the installation of this uh, damper works. The way that it works, you have to, um, so the, you've got a fire damper. There's got to be a shaft sticking out. It, this needs the shaft to stick out. I think it's three and a half inches or so. So you're going to put this up against the, uh, the damper, the, the frame of the damper or the box of the damper. The shaft is going to stick out where this is, just to give you an example, if this is the shaft, and then once that sticks out, bring that cam like this, and you can lock that, lock down these screws right here to tighten. 
Now, you also need this to sit in this rail right here. So what you do is you put this in here like, like this. Once this is mounted on the shaft, then you're going to hold this in place by a couple of tech screws, uh, like number eight tech screws, one here and one over here. That holds this bottom bar and it prevents this from, from spinning. So this is how the, the installation of this um, um, damper motor, how you, uh, how you physically so, install it. That's just to give you a quick uh, tabletop demonstration on how to pretty much, first, you know, I showed you the bad motor, how to trouble, how to do a tabletop test to determine that it was bad. These are non-fixable, you're just going to trash that. And then you just have to spend $268 to get a new one of these things and, uh, and then go ahead and install it. And that's the video. Thank you for watching.